Hello, we're looking at the most frequently missed problems of ch our chapter one test, test B, the multiple choice one. And one of the most frequently missed was number four. Not too bad. 74% of you got it right. So for most of these, most of you got them right. But let's take a look. It's a word problem here. Let's read the word problem one time. The population of a small town is expected to double every five years. If the population was 35 in 2005, what will the population be in 2025? Now let's go back and read it once. Let's read for our information. The population of a small town is expected to double. What does double mean? It means times two. So it's going to go times two every five years. If the population was 35 in 2005, what will the population be in 2025? So it's going to double. So I like to draw pictures. We had somebody during our warm-up math do a very nice job um, drawing out a chart. So it's 35 in 05. So it doubles once. So it's times 2 is... 70 is double one time in 10. So then it doubles again. It goes to 70 times 2 again is 140 in 15. Doubles again. We get 280 in the year 20. So how are we doing? We got to get to year 25 every 5. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So year 20, 2025, I'm abbreviating here, doubles again. So that would be 280 times 5 again, 560. We did a similar problem. Somebody drew out the chart. This is fine. It's a great way to do it. Uh, we learned uh, this is growing exponentially from 35 and 05 to 560 in 2025. Um, but there's a shortcut way to do it without doing five multiplication problems. What we can do is that we say it's going to be times two. We have 35. It's going to be times two, but it's going to be times two to the power of how many times? Times two once, twice, three times, four times. How many times did I times that by two? I times it by two four times. So what we have is 35 times 2 to the 4th. Let's see if we can get the same answer. Doing this is the same as saying 35 times 2 to the 4th. Well, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. No parentheses, but I do have an exponent. So I have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times, so I got rid of these, times 2 again is 8 times. This 2 is 16. So what I'm left with is 35 times 16. And I get 5 times 6 is 30. Eight, 6 times 3 is 18. Plus 3 more is 21. I leave the 0 because I'm now multiplying by 10. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 3 is 3. And did I get it? 560. I sure did. 560. So I did this two ways and got 560. Because it doubled um, four times. Two times two times two times two. Or just make out a chart. I like to use in the exponents because that's what we're learning about. Exponents. Here's a good use for them. Now, this is the... We, I was a little disappointed that we kind of fell down on this one. Um, only 67% got it right, which is sad because we kind of thought it was easy, but I think they tricked us. Look at this. 9 times 6 plus 4 equals 9 times 6 plus 9 times 4. People saw that regrouping really quickly, and they said, oh, associative. The most commonly um, answered item was associative. But it was different because we wrote the problems differently, and I think this was a format problem. We would write this like 9 times 6 plus 4. And then when we did the distributive property, that's what I had you do. And then I had you write it like this. Now that's the same as 9 times 6. Plus 
plus 9 times 4. When we distribute something, we take something, a, a stack, and we spread it out into smaller pieces. Um, so if I have a stack of math tests, I have a big stack, and then I put it in smaller pieces I'm, as I'm handing it out to the rest of the class. Another way we use the distributive problem when we have problems like 3 times 84. Well, rather than in my head stacking these up, going, okay, 84 on my head, I can say, well, I know what 3 times 80 is. And I know what 3 times 12 is. Okay, 3. I'm, I'm sorry, 3 times 4. So I know those two problems pretty well. Um, I know 3 times 8 is 24. 3 times 80 is 240. And then 3 times 4 is 12. And I can add that in my head. 240 plus 12 and get 252. And so that's a way of using the distributive property there. So um, lots of ways to use it. I'm afraid. I'm disappointed. that I think this just threw you off. And you looked for the different kind of grouping and you said associative. So... Um, we won't let that happen again. We won't let the format of the task mess us up. Because that was our most frequently missed problem. And it was probably one of the easier problems, too. And I think it was all format. So, darn it. Okay. Let's move on. Get over it. Okay. Which expression is equal to 5 less than a number multiplied by 3? Not too surprised that we had quite a few um, people miss this. Not as much as the last one. For the most part, we did pretty well. But which a five less? Read it a couple times. Five less than a number multiplied by three. So I'm going to break this down. I'm going to say that's kind of a number multiplied by three. That's kind of confusing. Let's just say this was eight. Okay. So three less than eight. Three less than eight. Is that right? Is that three less than eight? Three minus eight? No, that's not right. That doesn't look right at all. So let, let me see here. 3 less than 8 would be, I have 8. 3 less than that would be 5. So now we just kind of get a little fancy here with a number multiplied by 3. A number multiplied by 3 can be written, you know, a number times 3. Or it could be written, let me erase that, like a number a number. Usually put the, the unknown second. So it doesn't matter what order we put it. The commutative property says the order doesn't matter. So I can say 3x. That's the proper way to write a number multiplied by 3. Write the number first. Less than 5. Or oh, 5 less than a number multiplied by 3. 5 less than this. I'd have to put the minus 5 over here. And we kind of talked about when you see 5 less than something, the, five minus, the minus 5 will come later. So this is 5 less than a number multiplied by 3. Okay? I hope that helped. We'll keep working on these. Uh, right. Okay, here's another one. Uh, word problem. Let's just read the word problem. Grant has 34 baseball cards left after giving away 18. Which equation can you use to find how many baseball cards Grant had before he gave some away? What does this mean? He has 34 baseball cards left after giving away 18. How many... How many baseball cards did Grant have before he gave some away? Before he subtracted. Gave away means subtraction. Gave away. Some away. But before he gave away. Here it is. Then he gave some away. How many did he give away? He's giving away. I'm going back. He's giving away 18. Word problems should take some time. X minus 18. And he was left with 34. Now, look back at the problem. Here's my equation. Does it make sense? Grant has 34 baseball cards left. After giving away means subtracting 18 from a total. How many have as a total? 
Okay, so looks like here's my answer. X minus 18 is 34. And then I can solve it. How do I solve it? Well, I subtract 18. What do I do to, after I subtract 18? I add 18. That leaves me with just X. If I add 18 to one side, I add 18 to the other. 8 plus 4 is 12. 52. So he had 52 baseball cards. So I can plug that in 52 minus 18 equals 34. And then go back. Does that make sense? He had 34. He had 52 baseball cards. He had 34 after giving 18 away. So 52 minus 18 is 34. Makes sense. Solve the equation. D divided by 12 is 3. Um, we didn't have a whole lot of people miss this, but a few was too many in my opinion because we did this a lot. We said this is D divided by 12 equals 3. They wrote it differently. We're starting to write division as like fractions. D divided by 12 equals 3. So this is D divided by 12, and the book says to undo divide by 12, you multiply by 12. D divided by 12 times 12. How do I write 12 as a fraction? It's 12 ones. And then we talked about canceling. This cancel out. Or 12D over 12D simplifies to 1D. Or 12 over 12. That cancels out equals. I multiply this side by 12. I have to multiply this side by 12. And I wrote the 12 just as 12 instead of the 12 ones by because I'm multiplying it by a whole number and 12 times 3 is 36 okay there we go and then test it write it out 36 just take your time I think is what needs to happen divided by 12 equals 3 okay bingo good job well that was it we did pretty well on this test so not too bad. A couple of the word, little format trouble, word problem trouble can happen. Read it carefully. Plug the numbers back in. Draw a chart. In addition to working it out, go back, see if it makes sense. Uh, this was a format issue. We kind of got thrown off by the, they wrote it out a little differently. You know, I told you before these were hard. Five less than means the minus five comes after. I think we've said that. It's still hard, but we'll get it. So we have word problem. Not too bad. Most of us got this one right. Uh, no excuse problem because we've been doing this all since the start of school, this kind of stuff. So um, all in all, a good job on the test. So here are some of the ones that we missed. Not too bad, guys. Good job.